Hello. Um, I thought I'd take just a couple minutes, and um, Joe did a little bit of a good setup there, but just do a quick primer on some of the words that we hear a lot when it uh, comes to uh, patient engagement and patient empowerment tools. So um, one we hear about a lot is personal health records, and like Joe said, they've been around for a long time. Um, I think one of the reasons that people don't really think about it too much is their doctors aren't talking to them about it, and they're not really um, being informed about what these are and how important and how useful they can be. And there's lots of different personal health records out there. Microsoft has one, Cerner offers one. Um, but really they all have one thing in common, and it is that you manage an account that you can keep your information in and you can share it with other people. Um, a lot of personal health records, Cerner, Microsoft, all can connect to different healthcare providers to receive information so that you can store it all in one place and then you can share it out to other people. So that's kind of what personal health records are. And then we get patient portals. And patient portals are the things that your healthcare providers can put up a lot like um, uh, your bank has a website or you can do online banking. Um, patient portals give you things like um, access to see your records. Um, be able to collaborate with your uh, care team, secure messaging, things like that, as well as maybe even not even have to go to the doctor if you want to do a basic consultation. Um, so uh, the good news is we're seeing huge, huge uptake in this over the last couple of years. Um, two years ago, I could barely get in the door with most healthcare providers to talk about this technology, and thanks in part to um, new meaningful use regulations, I run out of time and don't have time to actually talk to everybody about this. So um, Doug Wager, Ken Burke, Amy Burgess, Clay Patterson from Cerner all work on our team and we all spend a lot of time um, talking to providers about how they can make these things available. I think though the more exciting thing about patient portals is this emergence of this concept called the blue button. Who's heard of the blue button? Good. Um, blue button is a button you can put on any website, any healthcare provider's website, and let you download a copy of the data. And I think Joe hit on that, and that was a really important point, is you don't want to leave your information in something that could go away. You want to get a copy of that information so that you have it when you need it. Not knowing how much radiation you received five years ago is a really ridiculous reason to have a medical problem. And being able to get this information and keep it for yourself is really important. Um, the last thing that I want to mention are health information exchanges. And these are um, popping up all over the place. And I think the picture tells a good story for two reasons. Number one, it shows you everybody that participates in these. So it lets your hospital, your physician, um, your insurance company, all of these organizations share information. But there's a big piece of that puzzle that's missing and we're starting to hear a little bit of conversation about how we actually let patients participate in that health information exchange. They have information that needs to be in there and they deserve to be able to have access to that information. Um, so health information exchanges are still kind of young. The industry's still not really sure what they're gonna do with them and how much value they can get out of them, but I think they're struggling with that because the most important resource isn't part of it. And if we can become part of it, I think we can find a lot more use of it. So um, again, I'll welcome you to Kansas City. This also is my home, and uh, thanks for being here.